with cutlass and revolver buckled around his waist. Every man was at his station. Moments seemed like hours as I sat upon the gun seat, repeating to the rhythm of the engine's throb, hold your fire, hold your fire, hold your fire until the bugle sounds, while my fingers grew numb upon the spot. Everywhere shells were flying and mines were bursting, while we with guns trained to deal death and destruction were only on parade. Through the peephole that held the hair sight of my gun, I saw the Spanish battle flag break on the enemy's batteries, and we cheered, for they had answered our defiance, and still the orders came faster. Hold your fire! For less than a moment I would close my eyes for rest, for I was a gun pointer. The hair cross in the sight was growing indelible upon my vision. And then in the calling of the rangers I heard distinctly, 2100 yards, and following it like an echo, the bugle sounded, fire. My eye was on the sight, my hand on the bulb. That choking thing in my throat fled before the flare of the bugle, and I pressed the spark with as little concern as I was wont to do at target practice. A quiver ran through every nerve of the ship as we on the pivot guns joining the starboard battery let loose a broadside into the enemy's fleet and left Olympia in a cloud of white smoke that clung to us and enveloped us like a bank of fog. The great gun, with a recoil of 36 inches, had belched her pent-up venom. Riding back on her trunnions, she slid again into the battery as number two, with crank in hand, stepped out to meet her. And for the first time it occurred to me to count the turning of the crank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 turns of the crank, made by a stalwart arm, and the breech block flew open. Leaning down from my seat, I picked up the spent electric primer from the breech and tucked it away in the folds of the neckerchief tied about my head, a souvenir of the first shot of our gun crew. A gentle morning breeze had fanned away the veil of smoke, and catching a glance through the gun port, I saw the Spanish ships with masts tilted and lopped away, pouring a stream of fire and steel toward us. The water was hissing from their contact, and we cheered the sight while the tub of water beneath the gun breach turned inky from the swabbing. And up the hoist came fresh charges. The carriage stopped at the breach. Number five shoved in the shell. Another turn and the first charge of powder stopped to follow the shell. Another in the second charge. And the truck ran back into the ammunition room below as I counted 11 turns of the crank, and the breach was again closed upon a full charge. The kid took a fresh primer from his belt and adjusting it, signaled with his hand, ready. And again we fired. We were going bow on toward the enemy when the Reina Cristina flagship cut loose her barge, swung away and came out to meet us. We cheered her, and the order came, concentrate your fire on the flagship. We sent an eight inch shell from stem to stern, through and through her, and still like an enraged panther she came at us, as though to lash sides and fight hand to hand with battle axes as in the old Spanish wars. Our ship had made its turn and the port batteries were manned when an order came to train the big guns on the forts. We were aching for one more at the Reina, but our first shot at the fort dismounted one of our guns, exploded a magazine and set fire to the arsenal. The strident echoes of the explosion sounded through the din of combat and we yelled with delight. Oh, it was great. And again I turned and counted 11 twice when the breach block opened and when it closed, again the white veil shut out the picture. When it lifted, our gun was out of training, and I had the leisure to look out. I noticed that the Admiral's flag was gone from the Reina Cristina. And then I saw the flag break on the foremast of the Castilla. It was the signal that withdrew our attack from the Reina. And then, great heavens, what was it? We were struck. Under our own broadsides we had quivered. Now we reeled, we careened. Were we sinking? Had they fired us? But the firing was incessant, and the ship righting herself was making the second turn. When I had counted eleven twice again, it was all forgotten, and we were literally pouring destruction upon the enemy.